Hey all. Today we are going to do conditions in net beans. So this is the fourth lecture in the series and over here we'll do how we can check conditions while getting a result. So to check conditions like in normal life we have the word if. If this thing happens I should do this. If this thing doesn't happen I have to do something else. So the same words have been used over here in programming and here we call them keywords. So the keyword if, if, is used to check a condition in the program. Since it's a keyword, it has to be written in small letters. You cannot write I capital in this. In the round brackets, you need to mention a condition. Technically speaking, I'll call it a Boolean expression. Why Boolean? Because as we discussed, Boolean means a value which can be true or false. So a Boolean expression is the one which gives the result as true or false. So we can give a condition which will be true or false. If the condition given is true, then we have to enclose a set of statements over here in the curly brackets. These statements will be executed if the condition is true. The statements given over here should be in braces if they are more than one. If there is a single statement, I can skip the curly brackets out here. Since if statement considers only the first statement to be a part of if, if the brackets are not there. So if you want more than one statements as a group to be executed only if the condition is true, those statements must be given between these brackets. If you give the brackets with a single statement, that is also fine. That's not a problem. So that can be given. And make sure you don't have a semicolon at the end of if. Usually we have semicolon at the end of every statement in Java, but when you're writing if, you don't have a semicolon at the end here because the statement is yet not over. It has just started. So it has a following part with it. So we don't put a semicolon over here. So this is how if works. And a simple if can be written as many times in your program as you want. Let's do an example for this. Let's do an example for if. So what we want to do is let's say I want to input uh, selling price and cost price of a product. So I have to make a swing GUI form, JFrame, and then next. And over here, the name is profit loss. So we have to find whether the person has got profit or loss, or there is no profit, no loss. So I have three options possible. If the selling price of the product is greater than the cost price, then obviously the person has got profit, so I have to show that. But if the selling price is less than the cost price, he sold for an amount which is less than the price on which he bought the product. So that would be a loss for him. And then if the selling price and cost price are same, then that means there is no profit, no loss. So to design the screen, I pick up a label first and I write here selling price. Then I need a text field in front of this where user is going to enter the value. So I just design a text field here. Initially it should be blank. So I edit the text to a blank text field and I will change the variable name to tma. So that's it. It's done. You can format it if you want. You can change the font and all. I'm not doing it in this example. So I copy it and I paste it to get the box for cost price and then I want one box for the result. So it's here. Let's right click on it and instead of selling price we want cost price in this and here you want the result so I change the text to result for this label and I need buttons so I have a button over here and I write on that check you can also have your other buttons like clear and exit. So clear. And one more button. That is exit. And what we need to do is this text field make it uneditable by unchecking this editable option from the property window. So the design is done. Now we need to code for it. Now how do we code for it? Double click on the check button. I double click on the check button and I come to the code window where I have this 
button one action performed thing and I have to write my code here. As you can see, we have to read the value of selling price and cost price if I think that those values will be whole numbers. So I've taken two integers for that. Then what I do, I have to read the values. SP will be an integer value, so we need to change the text. For that, we need to write integer dot parse int, then t1 dot get text. And similarly, we have to read the cost price. That would be integer dot parse int. And we have to pick the value from the second text field that's named as T2. So we have read the value. Now comes the part of the condition. I write the word if. You can see if is coming in blue. That shows that it's a keyword. And I've given the condition that is if SP is greater than CP. I have to execute only a single statement. So I'm not using curly brackets in this. So I just write t 3 set text. In this situation, we've got profit. So I write profit here. That's it. Then we have to give the next condition. So next condition is if SP, selling price, is less than the cost price. If it is less than the cost price, then we have to show loss. So in the set text thing, we'll be writing loss. And the third condition is that if selling price is equal to cost price, make sure when you're checking equality, you put equal to sign twice because single equal to is used for assigning a value. Whenever you need to check whether two values are same or not, you have to put equal to sign two times. So double equal to is for equality, whereas a single equal to sign only stores the value on the right hand side to the left hand side variable. So here we have checked if selling price is equal to cost price. If it is so, then we have to set no profit, no loss. That's it. Here no calculation was required. So we have not written any formula or calculated anything. We have just checked the conditions and through conditions we have got the result. So it's not necessary that every time the result has to be calculated. It depends on conditions number of times. Then the coding for clear and exit always remains same almost. So if I have to clear the boxes, I have to write t1 dot set text blank. And similarly, I have to do for the other two, since in total we have three text fields. So t1, t2, t3 all should be made blank. So t2 is blank, t3 is blank. And then we got exit. So exit will always remain same. That is system dot exit zero. It's done. We are ready to execute the code now. So we go to run menu, run file, or the shortcut is shift and F6 together. So it will execute. We'll show you the screen. We'll enter the values and we'll see how we get the result. If is a keyword which can be used in four different ways in programming. The one which we are using right now is independent if statements. That is every if is checked individually. If it is true, it works. If it is false, it doesn't. We have three more ways of using if. That is if else, nested if else, and else if ladder, which we'll be discussing later. Now, the screen has come, so I enter the selling price. And I enter the cost price. Let's suppose I'm bought it for 600. So if I click on check, I get profit. I can also extend the program to get the amount of profit as well, like how much profit the person has earned. So that is a kind of assignment for you. Try off your own ones to get the amount also over here. Otherwise, I'm there to tell you if there is some problem in it. Then let's try for the last thing now. If the selling price is 500 and the cost price is 600 and I click on check, it says loss. And in case both are same, both are 500, 500. So it shows no profit, no loss. Clear would clear the boxes and exit would stop this. 
So that's how we can simply use a statement if in program to get one out of the many results possible. So I have a code where there are possible, there is a possibility that I can have this result or that result or something else. To choose one out of those, we go for if. Let's do one more example. We have done uh, a program to find students' marks and tell whether the student uh, we just did to calculate the total end percentage. But now if you have to tell whether the student is pass or fail, or you have to find the grade of the student. There, if is if is going to be used. How are you going to use that? So let's say the question given is that you have to input percentage marks of a student and you have to print the grade of the student. And for that grade, there are conditions. There are conditions like if the student has got more than 90%, then you have to show A+. plus. If the student has got 80 to 90, then you have to show A. And then 60 to 80 is B and so on. So if I have to check conditions like this and show the grade, how would we code for that? So I'll take a label where I have given a message enter percentage then is there is a text field where the user is going to enter the percentage marks and just make it blank change variable name it's just t1 i need one more where we will show the grid so let's have it here and in this i write Great. And this text field should not be editable. Then I have a button here. And on this button, let's say we have written show. And similarly, if you want to exit in here, you can make those buttons. But right now, I'm just having this show. Let's go for it now. So double click on show. We come to J button while action performed. Here you need to read only the percentage marks. I've taken a variable named PER for that purpose. And then I read the value integer dot parse end t1 dot get text. We read the value and we check the conditions now. If percentage is greater than or equal to 90, in T2 we need to show A plus. So write A plus here. Then I have to check another condition. Now the other condition says that the percentage marks should be between 80 and 90. Now to check between 80 and 90, there is no way that you can write 80 hyphen 90. That's not possible. To join two conditions in Java, we have to put and in between. And this and is represented by these two ampersand signs. So the first condition is that marks should be greater than or equal to 80. And Second condition is percentage is less than 90. So this and says that both conditions must be true. So if the marks are 86, so that is greater than or equal to 80 also, and it's less than 90. So then both the conditions are true, so result would be true, and the grade displayed would be A. Similarly, I need to check for the further conditions. If it's greater than 60, but is less than 80, then we have grade B. So here, let's say we've given B. Then I have if percentage is greater than or equal to 50 and percentage is less than 60, it is C. And let's say below 50, the student has failed, so have to give F grade. So we'll check if percentage is less than 50. So we're going to write here if that is fail grade. So that's how we use if multiple times. So you can put if as many times as you want in your program. The only thing is the processor is going to check all the conditions. As a true condition is found, the statements given with that will be executed. And if the condition is false, the statement given with that is just ignored. 78 lies between 60 and 80, so we get grade B. It checks the first condition, which turns to be false. Then second was also false. Then it checks the third one, which is true, and it shows B. 
And since it is found true, but it doesn't mean that it will not check the conditions below that. It will check those as well. So that is one drawback with independent if statements that even if the condition is matching condition is found, it checks all the conditions following it as well. So if I give 90, if I give 97, the grade is A plus. If I give 45, that should be F. So that's how we can check conditions in. NetBeans or in Java. And this is your basic if, that is simple if statement without anything else. And this if can be used as many times as you want in the code. So we did two examples of this. You can try more examples. You can try more examples like you can uh, input the price of a product and depending upon the cost of the product, we can decide whether which amount of discount we have to give on it, then we can, uh, you know, make for a hotel where you have people staying there for a particular number of days and we can check on the number of days, like depending upon two days, we give them 10% discount, but if they have, you know, a long stay that is up to five days, we have a different discount, something like that. So different conditions can be checked for different reasons using if statement. So single if is used to check one condition if the condition is true. Statements are executed, but if the condition is false, statements are not executed. And you can give as many ifs in your code as you want, but you should be clear what result you have to get out of it. I hope you understood how if statement works. In the following lectures, I'll be explaining how to use the other three forms of if, that is if else, nested if else, and else if latter. Till then, if you have any doubts, write in the comment section and do like the video and subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed it yet. Thank you.